Hi, welcome to the Canadian City and Southern Railroad. Today's video is how to make guardrails and a short tour of the layout so far. There are eight narrow gauge code 55 stub switches on section four of my new layout. Now they've all been spiked down, but they still need their guardrails. Now this is a little simple cutting jig I've made that I use to make the points and wing rails on my stub switches but it can also be used to make guardrails. Now for eight switches, I'll need 16 of those. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is a little scrap of Code 55 weathered rail. Now this is a new piece that's come off when I was doing some track work. So it does not need to be stained again later, but its points are sharp on both ends having been cut with the rail nippers. So the first thing is to square off one end. I'm letting go of this a little bit for a few seconds to let it cool back down because it gets pretty hot doing this. Then I'll clean off the flash left over from grinding with a little jeweler's file. Now I know from having measured this that if I put it in this little slot, which holds it with the rail top down and the rail base up, that if I cut the ends off right here, it's going to be right at eight feet long. At this point, I'm gonna to have to saw backwards because the saw will grab because it's cutting through the middle of the rail at this point. Now, with a small mill file, I'll clean up the end a little bit. I'm gonna turn it around. Clean up the other end. Now this little groove here is one foot in from the end. And using it as a guide, I'll start to cut right here and I'm going to slide it out a little bit and cutting backwards cut through the base of the rail. Now you may have heard how the sound changed just then. That means that I'm all the way through 
the base of the rail. Turning it around, pushing it down, and lining it up nicely again. And I'm going to cut a second little groove just through the base of the rail, one foot in from the other end. pitch just changed so I'm through the base of the rail. Now I'm going to file down the base of the rail a little bit. I'm doing this is so that the guardrail is slightly shorter than the rest of the rails around it. This will cause it to sit a little lower on the ties and the top of it won't get knocked off when I clean track in the future. And I'm going to turn it around. And do it from both directions. will cause it not to sit up as high as the rest of the rail, even when there's a thin coat of glue to hold it in place. Remove it from its holder. Clean up the ends a little bit. And now I can bend the ends nice and even, and they won't kink or bend up or down as much as if I hadn't cut the little notches. Similar to when I made the wing rails for the stub switches in a previous video. And there you have it. Now I've already done the first 15. And I'm going to take this one and tape it down to hold it in place. Some of these have been used as regular rail in the past and are scraps from other layouts. And some of them are made with new weathered rail. So the ones that need it will get a touch of microengineering rail weathering solution on top. And then they'll all get painted with a combination of barn red and a dot of black craft paints so that they become fully weathered. Then I can stick them in place on the layout. All the rest of the narrow gauge stub switches are now spiked down. And all of the guardrails, except for the one right here, 
and those two back there where the side rails aren't in place yet have been glued down. In order to clear everything underneath this switch had to be controlled by a servo mounted up above the level of the NMRA gauge. So it's a rather tricky configuration. It took quite a while to figure that all out. Now I'm going to run around the room and I'll talk about the places along my railroad. This is the town of Canadian City, the main town on the railroad. This is the southeastern end of the railroad. leaving Canadian City, heading northwest, we go by the log pond and the future site of the sawmill. And the charcoal burners. Climbing the 2% grade up the side of the Canadian River Canyon, we pass the 10 stamp mill. Continuing up the 2% grade, we cross over. Catskill Creek. The town site of Catskill will be here in the foreground in front of the dual gauge. We're passing the switch back to the stamp mill. In the background is a siding that handles logs and cattle and sheep. <clears throat> We're entering the town of Wolf now. This will be the upper terminus of the railroad. We're continuing through the town of Wolf. Passing the station. And the Wolf Mining Company will be here in the foreground. Leaving the town of Wolf now, 
and heading down the steepest grade on the entire railroad. Back here will be a tunnel. This will represent the change of railroads. Going counterclockwise, we're entering Colorado. The trestle here has been on the previous two versions of the Canadian City and Southern Railroad. It crosses the Veramaho River on this layout. coming out of the tunnel in the background. If we were running clockwise, we would be leaving the rest of the world. Leaving to the rest of the world. Here in the middle ground will be a small coal mine to supply the mills and mines. Crossing over the Canadian River Bridge. and heading back into the town of Canadian City. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.